All right. Um, so, it, you know, as you all probably read, um, I am looking to start a pilot work group. Um, and the hope is that eventually this will grow into two additional work groups, one that focuses on the early literacy age, that birth to five, and then one that focuses on YA and teen, you know, preteen and teen, that 12 and, and up. And so um, before we do that though, I do have some exciting news that I have been sitting on pins and needles waiting to share with everybody. Um, and I'm still waiting on my flip forward to be approved. So I'm going to sidetrack us for about 30 seconds because I have you captive here. <laughs> I am starting a flip performers directory because I know that you all have been asking for this for years. Um, and we have finally got everything up. Um, yes, Amy Jane, woohoo. That is my, you know, I've, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to announce this. <laughs> So I feel like, you know, I, I don't know. They're just, I'm really good at keeping secrets usually, but then there are certain secrets like this that I just, as soon as I'm approved and I'm given the go ahead, I just, I want to shout it from the rooftops. Um, so I didn't just put that link in the chat box um, for y'all to check out later um, that we are, we are opening it. There's going to be more information in my next flip forward. Um, but I know that this is something everybody has been wanting, and so we're going to make it happen. We're making it happen. Um, so yay. Thank you for letting me hijack you for about 15 seconds. Um, so the FLIP Children's Work Group. We do have a page on the FLIP website with information about this group, work group. And, you know, we, over the last year and a half especially, we have done a lot of meeting online and virtual brainstorming, um, sharing ideas, and, and that has been absolutely wonderful. And I love those moments where we all get to come together and hear what you all are doing and help each other troubleshoot programming challenges and marketing challenges and all these other things. Um, and one thing that I love more than getting together and talking about all these amazing stuff is getting together and actually doing things. Um, and because coming together virtually has become so commonplace, I think now is also just an amazing time to be able to try to launch something like this. And so, um, so I am, I am establishing this work group and it is going to be kind of formal. Um, you know, it's not going to be the kind of thing where, you know, you come to a meeting and then we have another meeting and then we talk about stuff and then we do more talking. Um, my intention here is for us as a group to be very hands-on, to set goals, to develop projects, and to work through those together so that we can actually start putting out more materials for everybody statewide. So I've created this informational booklet and you can find this on the website and I will also send it to you. I'm going to go through it a little bit today. I'm not going to read it word for word. Um, you all can do that uh, when you have you know some time to go through and I'm going to try to scroll slowly so I don't make you feel like you're on a roller coaster or a whirly ride. Um, but my intention here is uh, we do have an actual application process um, because I this this is a bit of a commitment. Um, now that being said, there is an application process, but it, it this isn't a situation of I'm only accepting so many people. Um, it's really just because um, again I want this to be a very formal group. Um, right now I'm calling it the Children's Library Services Work Group, but I'm hoping once we have a, a group established that we can maybe come together and come up with a, a name that's, a, you know, a little bit jazzier um, than that. Um, you know, so I know how amazing the youth services library staff across Florida is because I get to see and hear about all these amazing and creative things that you all are doing. And so I really wanted to tap into that because, you know, I could sit here in Tallahassee and, and put out project after project after project. Um, but I feel like by partnering and collaborating those projects, 
will come out a whole lot more robust, more meaningful, because you all are the ones doing programs in and out every day. And I want to do my best to support you all. And so, um, yeah, and so anybody who, you know, works in a Florida library, or if, you know, we have folks who are retired or, you know, up and coming MLIS students or, you know, people who are really passionate about that, you know, ages five to 11, um, those are the people that I really want to tap into to pull together. Um, and then again, you know, for those of you, if you work with multiple ages, my hope is that once we sort of, um, you know, figure out how this process is going to work, um, that we will then sort of expand this and I can replicate it for some of these, you know, for the other two major um, age groups that, that libraries serve from zero to 18. Um, the time commitment, because I don't know about you all, but, um, you know, some days are busy, right? <laughs> we all have other things going on. Um, the setup for this is that we will have a an all come together. Sorry, I just hit my microphone. Um, we will have a come together meeting once a month and we will try to find a time that fits best for everybody who, who decides to sign up and be a part of this work group. In addition to that, um, you know, whatever projects that you decide that you want to volunteer and be a part of may have additional meeting times outside of that um, to get together and share ideas and sort of talk through. And in a little bit, I will show you sort of the general outline for the year. And again, this is, you know, this is a pilot, which means that it's very flexible. Um, if, if we get in, in this and we start moving forward and we decide, you know, this timeline isn't working or this, you know, this part of a process isn't working, um, this is sort of the guinea pig stage to figure out how best to make this work, especially because we are spread out all across the state. Um, and I have a little section down here, you know, why should I join? Um, you know, you all are so impactful at, on your local, you know, on your local community level. And many of you, um, you know, I know I have several of you who have also worked with FLIP on a statewide level. Um, an impact can just be so life changing for somebody professionally. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's so important that when we have an opportunity to really be involved with projects that we're passionate about, it helps keep us motivated. It helps prevent burnout um, when we can sort of take on these other projects that really excite us. Um, and then you get to impact your colleagues all across the state, which is just amazing. And, uh, you know, and then there's the professional consideration, um, you know, this, your, your name, your credit will go on the work that you do. And that's always good for, for resumes and portfolios, um, you know, along with the, the warm fuzzies of getting to do something that you genuinely love to do. Yeah, I'm trying not to scroll too fast. Don't want to make anybody dizzy. So here is sort of an overview timeline, because um, my intention is to open up applications once a year for uh, new people to join. Um, and then of course, if anybody after a year decides that, that um, you know, they just don't have the time commitment or they're ready to move on to other things, um, it sort of provides a, a great transitional period for that. And again, this is just a starting point. Point. We may get in and decide that it's not working. We need to do something different. Um, so September, October-ish is the application window. Um, we've got an application ready to go. Um, the link is on the website, which again I will send out. It's also, um, if you're look, if you had seen on the very front page of this. Ah, oh, great, Catherine. Um, that there's also a QR code if you're mobile and it's easier to just do it that way. Um, that application window will close October 31st, um, at which point I can go through and start trying to figure out when the best time for everybody to meet in November. Um, 
during that November meeting will sort of be a chance for everybody who signs up just to get to know each other, um, find out, you know, where where we're at in the state, um, what sort of communities we're, we're representing, you know, do we have folks from rural libraries, do we have more urban libraries, do we have, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I think I think the more representation we have of areas, the, the better and the stronger this work group will be. Um, and then we'll start talking about our goals and our priorities and what we want to accomplish um, and, and really try to figure out, you know, what the best meeting days, what our expectations are of each other as a group. Hopefully come up with a better name for this group <laughs> than, than uh, you know, work group because that just sounds so stiff and formal. And for those of you who've been working with me for a couple of years, you know that I, I am not a very stiff and formal individual. Um, so then moving into December, which I do realize is, is a very busy time for different reasons. It's not quite summer, summer programming busy, but I know a lot of people start taking off for vacations and having to cover. Um, so, you know, but December, um, I do want us to get together and really decide on at least two projects that we're going to move forward on. And um, that'll be the first opportunity for people to sign up uh, for those projects moving forward. At which point those groups, um, I will make sure you are all connected through an email chain um, for whichever, you know, projects you want to work on so that um, a lot of communication can can be handled through email. Um, I will be part of any any project, any group um, that you know we decide to create. Um, my recommendation would be that because this is something new, that we um, you know start with maybe a couple of projects that are not massive, just so we can sort of get our flow and our process and, and make sure that we're, you know, being realistic with ourselves. I know sometimes I tend to dream really, really, really big, um, which is great, um, but I, you know, I, I value the people who then try to bring me back down to earth and, and turn those big, big dreams and big plans into actionable steps. Um, and because the beautiful thing is that we can always add things as we go along. Uh, January, again, coming back together, um, you know, and, and having those project committees meet at least once before that monthly meeting. So my hope is that each of the projects will meet before we have our big, you know, all coming together monthly meeting so that we can update each other on how things are going. Um, and then, so February through August, that's a really big time frame. That also includes summer, and I know this. Um, again, the plan is just to keep up with the monthly meetings. Uh, and the committee's continuing to work towards whatever that project might be. May is the halfway point, and I do realize that is during summer. Um, but, you know, hopefully it's just a quick check in. But it's also a good point because it is our halfway point to sort of have an opportunity to talk about what's working well. Um, and decide, are there any other major areas that we want to pick up to finish out the year? Um, but again, my hope is that we'll also have enough people where even if we have some of these larger projects that, you know, the piece that each person is responsible for is not, you know, a burden, especially during those summer months, because I know how, how kooky and, and hectic those can be. And then September through August, we'll start ramping up to open up the application process for the upcoming year. <clears throat> And so while my hope is that we will be evaluating the work group throughout the year, that this will really be the opportunity where we sit down and really just reflect on the previous year um, and decide how we want to prepare for new members and how to bring them into the group and into the projects. And then the last page, and then I will certainly stop talking after this so you all can ask questions. Uh, hopefully you have them. So this is sort of just like a little, um, I, I hesitate to call it an FAQ because they can't really be frequently asked questions if, if nobody knew about this beforehand. But um, these were some of the questions that I anticipated that people would ask. Um, you know, in the first one, who chooses the projects? Really, I want this to be a work group 
you know, I, I really don't want this to be me coming to the work group saying, all right, we need to do A, B, and C. Um, that is not how I envision this going. So my, my plan is that the work group, we will decide as a group, um, and, and these projects should sort of fall in line with the goals that we've set out for the year. I'm happy to provide ideas. I certainly have them. Um, you know, I have some projects here sitting on my wish list that I'm happy to bring up to the group. Um, I, I think they are projects that would be fun and I think they would be stronger with the work group handling them versus just me. Um, but again, ultimately, I want this to be um, a, a chance for you all because you are out there, you know, planning the programming. Um, I want this to be an opportunity for you all to tell me what it is you really want and you really need. And then we brainstorm as a group on how to make that happen and then we make it happen. Um, Catherine asked, are you thinking of reproducible program database list or statewide projects that all Florida libraries can contribute to the final project? So Catherine, I think we'll have to decide that once we have our work group established. Um, I did have a star down here that talks about, you know, what are some examples of potential projects? Um, so some of the things that have popped into my head are definitely, you know, programming and resource toolkits because I think those are incredibly valuable. Um, I shared one out in one of my flip forwards over the last couple of months that I, I think y'all have to forgive me. My memory is, um, you know, my, my brain has turned into a marshmallow over the last year and a half. I don't know about you all. Um, I think it was Ohio or Illinois or one of those northern states where they designed a toolkit on using Discord. Um, because so many libraries were using it. And so they created this amazing toolkit on how to use it, how to approach it. Um, it was very responsive to, to library staff needs. Um, but I mean, it can also be things like, um, you know, designing and developing, um, you know, downloadable bookmarks with literacy tips on it that the libraries who maybe don't have the budget or they want something quick can go on and download and, and print out on cardstock you know um, it can be that low tech it can be a database if we've got the the skill and the talent to make something like that happen um, you know the the specific projects i think will, will ultimately come down to the work group um, and, and what abilities and skills and resources we have um, did that answer your question in a roundabout kind of way? <laughs> okay. Um, do you have to be involved in every project? No, absolutely not. Um, number one, everybody's busy. Um, you all are running programs. You have patrons to, to help and assist. You've got amazing, cool stuff going on. Um, plus, the great thing about this is it really gives you a chance to, to focus on the things that you genuinely love to do and that sort of just make you feel excited and bouncy and um, you know that those passion projects and so um, you know we want to be able to make sure that we're we're being cognizant of everybody's schedule and um, you know I'm 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 hoping that the the saying you know many hands make light work is really going to lend itself to making this successful um, and, and as I mentioned, we can always add more projects throughout the year. Um, you know, I think some things that we come up with might be more of a time commitment, a longer, longer term effort. Um, you know, and some things may may take a few weeks to knock out. It's just going to depend upon the scope of the project or the initiative. Um, and then I threw in this last one, you know, what happens if I volunteer in my availability? goodness, availability changes. Uh, you know, that happens, right? Especially right now, things are just really hard to predict and we understand that. Um, you know, we're, we're a team and, and I plan for this to operate as a team. And so um, if at any point, um, you know, you need to either pull out completely or you just need to pull back, um, you can reach out to me, reach out to your team. We'll see how we can support you. This isn't, um, you know, this this isn't the Hotel California. If you check in, you you can check out. We will let you, we'll let you check out. Um, but that's also one reason why going into it, um, 
I really want to encourage people to really evaluate their, you know, their ability to commit to something like this. And do they genuinely, you know, do you have the time? Do you have the ability to really commit? Um, you know, things are going to happen. Things are going to come up that are unexpected. And Jenny asked, is membership limited to one person per organization? Nope, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, the only thing I might encourage, Jenny, is that um, depending on how big your organization is, um, you know, if there's only five of you and all five of you want to be involved, you might have to sort of figure out, um, you know, on, on that local level how to sort of balance, um, especially if, you know, y'all are having to uh, be out on the floor and in a meeting at the same time and that sort of thing. But no, but that's, you know, completely on your local level. Um, no, my my hope is that this is an opportunity for folks who really just want to do more and have an impact to come come around. It's not, um, you know, for some states they have groups like this that are part of their statewide library association, um, and and we don't have that. And FLA is doing a lot of wonderful things. I know that there are some youth services groups that meet regionally to sort of swap and share ideas. Um, as well. So um, really what I what I wanted to build here was um, a group that is going to make things happen for everybody statewide because I know how talented you all are. I know how creative you all are. And um, I'm pretty good at keeping my thumb on the pulse of what's going on, but I'm still not out there every day anymore like you all are. And you know, the the longer I'm here, the more removed I am from from what you all are are experiencing daily. And so, um, I think being able to do these projects with you all as part of this group with me and me working alongside you is really going to make this so much more valuable to everybody. And so, um, that's sort of this informational booklet in a nutshell. Um, again, I will send links in the follow-up email, um, and, the, and that'll have the link for the application if you're interested. Um, we'll also make sure that we send out the recording to this. Um, so please also feel free to share it out to your colleagues if they weren't able to attend today, um, or if you have somebody who you know you think would be fantastic and interested. Um, it's this is going to be a, a live and learn situation. Um, you know, I have facilitated groups before, but this is a little different. Um, but I'm I'm excited about where this could go, and and you know, from the tiny little projects, and once we really sort of dig in, I'm excited to see what we come up with and what we can do for our Florida, you know, youth services staff. So that was my spiel. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we don't have the whole room muted today. I know we normally do that, um, but if you have any questions, you can unmute and ask through your microphone, or you can put it in the chat and we'll read it out loud. So please feel free to ask questions. Rolling it over. <laughs> All right. Well, we, um, Olivia, am I still planning to stick with CSLP? Oh, absolutely. This is not at all replacing our summer program at all in any way. Honestly, Olivia, this is sort of, um, you know, I have wanted so much of FLIP's focus is on summer programming and it is fantastic and summer is such a big part. But I, I also really have been wanting to give equal attention to the non-summer season um, because you know, we we do, we put so much time and effort into summer in the pre-planning and all that, um, but you all are providing services and programming all year long. And so this, 
this to me is sort of, you know, supplementing for the rest of the year and how we might be able to continue to, to meet needs and, and provide resources and inspiration and that sort of thing. So yes, CSLP is not going anywhere. Uh, Jenny said, this is very exciting and I'm looking forward to pulling together expertise. It's always valuable. Oh, I know you all are definitely my most valuable source of information. <laughs> and then Re Rebecca asks, is participation in a group for a specific length of time or can people stay on as long as they want? As long as you want. Um, you know, the great thing is, you know, I'm formalizing this, but it's also, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a board, right? It's not a board of trustees or anything like that. So there's not going to be, um, you know, after three years, you must rotate off or anything like that um, at all. You know, the only thing I would ask is that if somebody does genuinely get to a point where they know, um, you know, they know that they just don't have the resources and time to really dedicate, um, that you know that's that you know they they'd be able to say you know what I, I need to come back at another time um and again you know projects might look different some of these projects might only take a short while some might be a little more involved and as we become more comfortable we might start dreaming a little bigger right once we can start traveling we may start dreaming a little bigger about what what we can do with this and where we can take it Then Renee asks, did you say library school individuals can volunteer too? Absolutely. You know, if we have people who are trying to come into the field, I think many of us know that it can be really hard to get hired into this field, even with a master's degree. Um, you know, I think, again, just my, my same request is that, um, you know, that they're able to really commit and dedicate whatever time is necessary for the projects that they are on. Um, but I, I would think that would be really valuable if somebody isn't already working in a library, but they're going to library school, they wanna work with this population to be able to say, you know, put on a resume, you know, hey, I, you know, I had, I played a role in, in this, this project and, and, creating those connections and that network. Um, and, you know, one thing I love about this field is that we have people from all sorts of backgrounds, right? Not everybody has an MLIS um, and that's okay. And so, yeah, if you know people, as long as, you know, if, if they're dreamers and doers and they're passionate, bring them on. <laughs> Any other questions? I don't want to rush you all, but I also, you know. And I will say too, you know, if you're sitting here and you're you're sort of uncertain, um, you know, if you have the time to commit this time around, again, you know, we'll open up applications next year. But if you have ideas for projects, you can also send those in to me as well, and I, I can certainly bring them to the work group as well. Um, my hope is that once we start moving and people start realizing that. The, you know, the work group is a thing that hopefully will get feedback about what sorts of things other people need. Um, Catherine asked, will this be geared toward new youth services librarian staff or for everyone across the spectrum? Are you talking about the projects that we produce or the work group? And again, if you have a microphone and you're able to, to talk, please feel free to unmute. We don't have to just hear my voice. <laughs> projects produced. So the projects um, that we take on with this particular group, they will be aimed at 
kids five to 11 and their families if it's more of a family program. Um, so that's gonna be the purpose of this group. Now, once this group is sort of off and flying, and you know we we sort of feel confident in what we're doing and that we <laughs> that we know what we're doing at that point i will then probably well my plan is to then duplicate this effort but then focus you know have a group that just focuses on early literacy that so that's zero to five and then having another group that focuses on that 12 to 18. so my end goal is to end up with three different work groups now that's not to say that other library staff that work, you know, if say we've, we have adult services library staff, that they may not benefit from some of the stuff we produce. Um, but the, the target audience, the target goal will be the, the youth and children staff that work with that 5 to 11 and families. Did that answer your question? Okay. And then is there any limiting factor who would not be accepted as a new member that we should be aware of before sharing this with other team members? Really the only limiting factor is that they are, you know, either currently working in a library or they've retired or if they're like a library student who's looking to get in, um, you know, my my aunt loves kids she's great with kids but this wouldn't be something that i would just open up to her um, just to say hey you have good ideas um, that's really the only limiting factor um, it's not you know there's not an educational requirement it's not a you have to be so high up in the hierarchy within your library um, you know, it's not the kind of thing where there's a membership fee or anything like that that could be a disqualifier. So really, it's just making sure that, you know, it, you know, we want to bring people in who, who know what you all are dealing with. Um, yeah, that's really the only thing. If it's just sort of like some random person off, you know, off the street, <laughs> then um, that would probably be a disqualifying factor. But other than that, um, you know, it's, we're, we're not, you know, it's not an application for the purpose. Like if anybody's done, you know, our silly program, our leadership program, where they only accept so many people, it's not like that. Um, you know, there's not a requirement that you had to have worked in a library for at least a year. Um, yeah, did that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Jenny asks, could this grow into a project for training materials for youth librarians? Jenny, that would be amazing. I would love for that to happen. <laughs> yeah, I think it could. Um, you know, again, it's ultimately it's going to sort of um, depend on those goals that we we decide and again you know each year that this happens if we can continue to you know this is our pilot year so this is really the year for us to really learn and decide what's working what's not working what you all really need and want in the field um and so the great thing is that you know each year that we have sort of a changing group that's going to be that opportunity to change our goals and, and decide what we want to focus on for that year too. And this could, you know, again, this could be, sometimes we may find ourselves reacting to a need. Um, you know, a year and a half ago, there was a little bit out there, a little bit of materials for virtual programming, but in the last year and a half, we've just seen that need grow so quickly and so fast that now there's stuff everywhere. So, you know, we may also find that we're in a position where there's been a huge unexpected shift and we want to try to do something to help meet that need. Um, yeah, more training is always great. <laughs> okay. And I want it to be some fun things too, right? Not that training's not fun, but 
know, ready, ready made programs to go would be great. Any other questions? And of course, if you think of something after the fact, you can always email me. Jenny said program sharing platforms, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, you know, I, I am continuously inspired every time I either get to read survey results or, um, you know, I've, I'm still going through a lot of the uh, statistics from summer, the, you know, the qualitative pieces and the programs and, um, you know, we have some great webinars coming up that are coming from you services staff. Um, so I'm, I'm excited because I am, I am continuously inspired. Um, and so I, I want to take that and try to bottle it up <laughs> so that we can share it with everybody. Any other questions? All right. Karen, I think this is going to be amazing too. I'm I am really excited. Well, I will not hold everybody up if there aren't any more questions, because I know that, um, you know, you all can use 20 minutes to um, not be in a meeting, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so again, if you have any additional questions that pop up, uh, email me my con. I think at this point, most of you probably know how to reach me, but um, if you don't, my phone number and my email address are currently on the screen. Um, I will be sending out a follow-up email um, probably next week. That way uh, we have a chance to get the video uploaded um, onto YouTube if anybody wants to come back and watch it. And then, um, you know, I'll make sure. I did put the link to the room earlier, and I will uh, I'll throw it in the chat one more time for anybody who wants to to go look around now <laughs> and hopefully apply. Mandy, I, I agree. I think this is a great way to elevate statewide library services. Wonderful. Well, everybody, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, for those who are working this weekend, best wishes. <laughs> Happy October. Um, and we will be in touch soon. Thank you so much.